welcome back to my page i have got a really good one for y'all today a really good procreate tip especially if you're somebody who wants to get into doing fashion illustration or you just want to add some more excitement to your artwork have you seen the illustration trend of people doing a fashion illustration and using wasabi tape to fill it in and give like the outfit textures and patterns if you haven't please go look at it now me being a digital artist how could I make that work for myself? Well, you can do the exact same effect using clipping mask. And I'm gonna show you how. Um, so I have an outfit here on this girl and it's a nice little khaki two-piece suit. It's real cute. But I wanna show you how you can add patterns and really shake this up. First things first, I have this out this on two different layers. Like I have her top on one layer and her bottom on another layer right and i want what i want to do is import the textures that i want to use um getting textures is really easy there's actually websites you can get textures from you can get it from etsy you can get it from creative fabrica they have a bunch of seamless patterns i personally purchase my seamless patterns from um creative fabrica and i have a lot of glitter paper that's where i get all my glitters from everybody's like where you get the glitter from i get it from creative fabrica so I'm going to import, oops, got it in the wrong spot. I'm going to import my glitter. I'm not going to use it right. See, it already automatically clips. Um, <laughs> I don't need that right now. I think I want her to be a plaid. So I'm going to go to my wrench. I'm going to go to add, insert a file. I'm in my iCloud, iCloud, iCloud drive right now. But you can save the thing to your photos as well. I want to get a plaid. This is going to be a really quick tutorial. I'm going to get a plaid. Um, I think this is the pretty one. Okay, it's a small one, so we're definitely going to have to stretch it out. I'm going to show you different ways to manipulate this as well, but it's really, really pretty. I think it's going to go with her hair. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get it right over her outfit. I put it on top of the outfit layer and it all see it automatically clips. To make a clipping mask, undo this. Put it over the layer you want it to go on. Tap the center of that layer. And you're gonna go to this little menu here, put clipping mask make, and you see how it automatically will attach it to whatever is underneath. And just like that, you have a completely different pattern right on top of your work. You see how it just, it automatically um, makes it for you? But we're gonna manipulate this a little bit. For one, we need to add shading to make this look more realistic. So I'm gonna make another layer on top of that and I'm gonna clip that layer to it using a clipping mask. And I wanna set it to multiply. Remember I tell you all the time, play with your blending modes because you can get different effects with your blending modes. Then I'm going to Let's say I have an overall warm feeling to this. So I know I want my shadows to be somewhat warm. So I'm going to go into more like a, a magenta purple. I'm going to stay to warm. Well, this might actually be cool. But anyway, you can pick whatever color you want to act as your shadow. Now I'm going to go through my brushes and I'm just going to pick a... I want to go with my brush that I always use, which is my gouache brush. And when you're using the clipping mask, it will only work on the layer, on the object you clip. See how I'm on that layer, but it's not doing anything. But if I go over the thing, you start to see it very faintly. And what I want to do with this is I want to actually make it look like it's got some shadow to it. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to add my shadows where the light would be hitting it. This is how you keep, take it from being just like, um, laying flat to making it look like actual fabric. So whenever you're doing this, remember to shade it or don't. Sometimes it's cute without the shading on top. If you want a more graphic look, I always like to add some shading or highlights to mine. 
and you can also manipulate it further than that you can go back to the original layer and you can select like let's say i don't like that this is lining up that doesn't look natural to me so i'm actually going to like select the area around that and i want to do warp and you can manipulate to make it look like it's more natural see the possibilities are endless with this you can really play around with this see now you can really play with it and then i'll go back to doing my shading making sure i'm getting where the light is hitting it oh and make sure you fill in any gaps that are missing okay now i want to add some highlights so i'm going to go over the layer i was just coloring on i'm going to put it on sheen sheen is the one i use for my highlights i'm going to make another clipping mask it's going to make everything stay in the same place and I'm going to get a lighter color. I usually use like a yellow or um, a light orange or something. I'll use a yellow. Same brush. I'm going to lower my opacity a little bit because it can tend to be a bit strong. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my highlights where I want them to go. Zoom into you guys can see that. And the reason I'm using a blending mode is because it will allow you to see underneath. See, if I did this on normal... It would kind of blur out what's underneath. I don't want that. I want it on the blending area. I want to be able to see everything that's happening underneath. So now she has this cute little plaid outfit. And like I said, you can play around with it. Now that I have the top, I can go down to the bottom. And add another texture here. I'm going to go to my branch. I'm going to go insert file. I'm going to go back to my references. get a, a different plaid this time. I'm going to get a blue. So just for fun, bring that down. Make sure I'm covering the whole thing. And now I'm actually going to manipulate it before I hit the clipping mask. I'm going to go to warp, advanced mesh. I'm going to move it so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I kind of want the, um, the plaid to form around her legs. I'm bending it a little bit so it'll form around her legs give her a nice skin tight look right so i got that there but i needed to actually adhere the design so i'm going to clip it and there we go See, easy now if i want to take it up a notch and i want to add some more detail to it this is one of my favorite tricks because you can actually do this the clothing to makeup anything so i love to bring in you saw me pull it up earlier glitter sheets like this and add glitter effects so what i'm going to do is in order to do that i'm going to put a blank a blank a blank uh layer underneath it i'm going to clip the glitter to the blank layer like that and i'm only going to draw within the blank layer i'm going to grab a, a brush for some detail and I'm only drawing in the blank layer. So anytime that I, anything that I draw is going to turn out to look like glitter. You're going to see, see, now you get that glitter design. And you get pure control over exactly where you want it to go. Now you could use the glitter the same way you saw me use the plaid where you can make the entire top glitter if you wanted to. But I like to use it as an accent. It just, you see how you can really, really add like a lot of fun details. Like if I wanted to give her a glitter button. As long as you're working within that layer that's underneath. And like I said, I love to do glitter makeup. Oh, I'm going to make sure I'm above the makeup. Ah, that's the thing. I'm underneath the makeup. No problem. I'll put the same glitter layer up here. I'm just going to duplicate I want to bring it up here and I'm going to clip it to a blank layer. Oh, let me move it so it covers her face. Oh, that works. Do the same thing. Clip it, go to the layer underneath, the blank layer underneath, and draw only in that layer. And I'm going to give her some 
glitter makeup. Like I said, this allows me to control what I'm doing. And I'm using like a fine detail brush, but whatever brush you use, it's going to do the same thing. So I'm gonna give her glitter lipstick. It's just a fun, quick thing to play around with. Like I said, the, my favorite tool in Procreate is the clipping mask because you can just do so much with it. That is my quick tip of today. I hope you liked it. Again, you bring in whatever texture you want to use. You can even take your iPad and take a photo of your favorite fabric and just pull it in into your thing and use it to actually apply to your illustrations. Just remember once you pull it in to shade it the way you would normally shade so that it blends in and it looks real. You give it some depth and have fun with all different types of papers and glitters. The possibilities are endless with this. So I hope you learned something new. Like I said, play around with those clipping masks and those blending modes because you just never know what you may discover. If you like this and you want to see more, please give me a like, give me a comment, and subscribe and tell your friends about me. This is the place you want to be to learn all those little tips and tricks about Procreate you've always been curious about. If you guys don't, please follow me on TikTok and IG. Love you so much. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.